This is lecture part 4 of chapter number 5 that is elasticity and its application. First slide is the determinants of supply elasticity. The more easily sellers can change the quantity they produce, the greater the price elasticity of supply. For example, supply of beachfront property is harder to vary and thus less elastic than supply of new cars. Uh, you can say that there is only uh, much beach uh, front property available. However, you can make a lot of new cars. For many goods, price elasticity of supply is greater in long run than in short run. Elasticity in general is greater in the long run. It does not matter if supply or demand you can change uh, the whole for the long run uh, that you cannot change in the short run and in the long run firms can build new factories or new firms may be you can say able to enter the market to produce more supply. In the short run uh, that's as easily done so more elasticity in the long run in terms of supply so you can say that for many goods price elasticity of supply is greater in long run than in the short run because firms can build new factories or new firms may be able to enter the market Next is uh, active learning uh, about elasticity and changes in equilibrium. The supply of beachfront property is inelastic. The supply of new cars is elastic. Suppose population growth causes demand for both goods to double. At each price, quantity demanded doubles. For which product will price changes the most? and for which product will a quantity changes the most. Now come to uh, uh, the answer of active learning. Now let's look at the beachfront uh, property here. Initial price is P1 and there are two demand curves here. Uh, Keep that in mind, the only difference is the elasticity of supply uh, and the slope of the supply curve. And here is the supply curve, the blue one. So we are just changing uh, how the supply curve is uh, drawn here. When supply is inelastic, an increase in demand has a bigger impact on price than on quantity. Now the demand curve shifts uh, to the right. Uh, initially it is D1. And when it shifts to the uh, right, you can say the new demand curve is denoted by D2. But it is in a parallel fashion. As you can see that D2 is parallel to D1. At each price, quantity demanded is twice as high. So the new demand curve will be flatter than the initial one. When supply is inelastic, that is a pretty much vertical supply here, as you can see, that this supply curve is, you can say, pretty much uh, vertical, or you can say it's a steeper uh, supply curve just because of uh, there the supply is inelastic. Uh, remember that demand is increasing but we have uh, a sort of vertical supply because we are take uh, here we are just talking about beachfront property there is uh, not a lot of it uh, 
no uh, now availability is so much beachfront property is available uh, so when supply is inelastic and increase in demand has a bigger impact on price than on quantity so that increase in demand given this inelastic supply you can see a bigger change in price than in quantity because it's not as much quantity to be varied here you can see that when supply is inelastic an increase in demand uh, has a bigger impact on price than on quantity as you can see that as demand increases the price uh, increases from P1 to P2 and Q1 to Q2 uh, is the increase in quantity but due uh, to the fact that supply is inelastic so increase in the demand has bigger impact on price as you can see here that there is a a bigger change in price as compared to a change in quantity so due to uh, the fact that supply is inelastic so uh, an increase in demand has bigger impact on price than on quantity now next comes the case of new cars and when supply is elastic like in new cars supply curve is flat as you can see here that here the supply curve is flat as compared to this slide where supply curve is steeper now here supply curve is flat and demand is going to increase as you can see here uh, and there are identical demand curves D1 and D2 these two are identical demand curves when supply is elastic and increase in the demand has a bigger impact on quantity than in price because there is higher supply price does not go up um, a whole lot but you see a big jump in quantity here uh, so there is more elasticity in new cars than there uh, uh, there is in limited beachfront property so when supply is elastic an increase in demand has a bigger impact on quantity as compared to on price uh you can see that it means that there is more elasticity in new cars than as compared to the beachfront property where supply is uh inelastic how the uh, price elasticity of uh supply can vary supply often becomes less elastic when quantity rises due to its capacity limits think about a factory that there is excess production in a factory however you can reach a point you are at the maximum and you initially would have to build a new factory add on to a factory to build to be able to make more product so that is very realistic uh, that is more of a long run situation that's why we say elasticity is greater in long run than in short run uh, let's see here by using this graphical representation uh, when price increases from three dollars to four dollars uh, and 29% increase using midpoint method uh, we did uh, that uh, midpoint method in our previous lectures uh, quantity rises from 100 to you can say here 200 or uh, you can say 69% here 
because it is greater than 29%, the price elasticity of supply is greater than 1. When price rises from, you can say, uh, 12 to 15 dollars, Uh, which is a 22% increase, the quantity rises from 500 to 525, that is about 5%. So the price elasticity of supply is less than 1 here, as you can see. So you can uh, see that on the same relatively elastic supply curve, elasticity is going to change over the long run. When output is very low, here, um, it's uh, relatively easy for firms to increase output. They may have excess capacity and they uh, are not requiring full efforts uh, from the workers. Increasing output is not difficult, so it doesn't make an increase in the price. Uh, it doesn't take much of an increase in the price to increase production so you can get more of your workers or you can say you can get more from your workers. When output is high, it is relatively expensive for firms to increase their output. Uh, there is little or no excess capacity for production they are already uh, running their factories at high level of intensity to increase output further they might uh, have to pay their workers over time uh, and their machines experience more wear and tear and therefore require uh, more uh, repairs so at higher levels of output it takes much larger price increase to make firms willing to increase their output further. Example uh, is in the summer driving season, gasoline demand is uh, the highest at that uh, season. Many refineries are producing near capacity, so supply curve is steep. And in the uh, months uh, when demand is low, uh, for gasoline, refineries have more excess capacity and supply curve is not steep. So if you uh, just look at this diagram, this part of the supply uh, curve is flat and here it becomes more elastic. So half of the supply curve is elastic that is greater than 1 and half of the supply curve is inelastic that is less than one so supply often becomes less elastic as quantity rises due to capacity limits at this point here the supply curve is steep and here the supply curve is flatter and elasticity is greater than one and where the supply curve is steep uh, and at um, by looking at this situation where the supply curve is steep, you can say that elasticity is less than 1. Other elasticities. Uh, the income elasticity of demand measures the response of quantity demanded to a change in consumer income. The formula for income elasticity of demand is uh, income elasticity of demand is equals to percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in income. Uh, recall from chapter number four, an increase in income causes an increase in demand uh, for a normal good. Hence, for normal goods, income elasticity is greater than zero, and for inferior goods, income elasticity is less than zero. Uh, so, there is a positive relationship between income and 
quantity demanded. Uh, you can say that for normal goods income elasticity is greater than zero. It means that uh, an, in, uh, an increase in income you can say um, causes an increase in demand for a normal good or there is a positive relationship between uh, income and quantity demanded and for inferior goods income elasticity is less than zero uh, for inferior goods the relationship between income and quantity demanded is negative as income increases so demand for that product decreases that's why the income elasticity for inferior goods is less than zero uh, as if income increases uh, then you demand less for those products that's why the income elasticity of inferior good is less than zero next is cross price elasticity of demand the cross price elasticity of demand measures the response of demand for one good to changes in the price of another good its formula is cross price elasticity of demand is equals to percentage change in quantity demanded for good one divided by percentage change in price for good two uh, for substitutes cross price elasticity is greater than one for example an increase in price of beef causes an increase in demand for chicken uh, if good one and two are substitutes and if the price of beef increases then demand for chicken increases people tend to buy uh, more a uh, chicken now uh, just because of the reason that beef becomes expensive so the demand uh, for chicken increases so this is the case of substitutes and for complements cross price elasticity is less than zero for example an increase in price of computers causes decrease in demand for software uh, complements are always used together similarly if gasoline prices increase then the demand for cars decreases and uh, you can say that increase in price of computers causes decrease in demand for software as the price of computers uh, is high so the demand for softwares decreases because complements are always used together if the price of uh, one product increases then the other uh, the demand for the other decreases this is the case for complements